Good day and welcome to NBP Hot Seat. My name is Zaf Quelo from Nuclear Business Platform. Joining me today is Mr. George Borovas, who's the head of nuclear from Hunton. George advises government lenders and sponsors on the development of civilian nuclear power programs and the financing and construction of nuclear power plants. He has worked on projects and transactions globally. Hunton has unique experience advising governments on programs development, including the UAE and Egypt. The firm has a full scope nuclear practice advising on the most high profile nuclear power projects globally. Welcome, George. We are delighted to have you with us again today on NBP Hot Seat. Now, the last time when we had you, you shared your insights on the top three challenges facing new build program, which was indeed very fascinating and pertinent. So, George, what has been keeping you busy since we last spoke a couple of months back? Uh, first of all, Zaf, thank you very much for having me back on the hot seat. Great to be here. And uh, indeed, it was a great conversation a few months ago. We talked about the top three challenges for developing nuclear power projects and probably new programs. Um, and indeed, over the past few, um, few months since then, I have been advising on a number of new build projects and uh, projects that are going to be coming um, online soon. Um, I, advising on the same topics that we were discussing about risk allocation, project management, and developing a human resources. So it's a very topical time and a very interesting time to, to have these discussions. Wonderful, wonderful. So George, as you must have observed, many emerging countries are leaning towards SMRs instead of um, the traditional large reactors. Why do you think this is the case? Perhaps you can also touch on the advantages which SMR seems to have um, over large reactors. This is a very exciting time for, for nuclear and SMR, small modular reactors, are a, uh, provide a new dimension for, for nuclear. Um, they, are, uh, they, they have a lot of attractive uh, features that uh, make it uh, interesting for developing countries to look at. Uh, they're smaller, so they're easier to construct. They don't require that long of a construction time that we discussed last time. They're easier to finance because the, 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 the amounts that we're talking about are much more uh, reasonable compared to the large reactors. Um, they are, in addition to this, they have uh, their newer technology. So they have inherent safety features may, maybe today's reactors do not have. Um, and they can also apply, you can use them in places where you couldn't traditionally use a large reactor, like a small island, for instance, if you have a, a grid a problem, small grid, or if, with applications like mining. So there's a number of reasons why a lot of the countries are looking at SMRs, and it's definitely gonna be a very, very exciting time, which I think a lot of these projects will go ahead using the SMR technology eventually. Yeah, very, very interesting because just a um, couple of days back, I was reading an article about how the mining, the mining um, industry in Australia could potentially uh, look at SMRs and a, a report was developed also. So it seems like um, countries which traditionally were not looking at nuclear or were opposed to nuclear uh, might have a rethink with regards to um, going nuclear with the emergence of SMRs. But I guess only time will tell, George. Um, so George, I mean, you, you touch on the, the advantages um, that small module reactor possesses. Now, how about the challenges in your opinion, George? Well, one danger that we have as an industry um, with SMRs is to be uh, overconfident and to focus on the positives, you know, small, um, small amount of financing required, relatively small amount of financing, shorter construction periods and all the rest. In the end, these technologies will be first of a kind. And anybody that has worked on any project, not only nuclear, but in general, when you're looking at a first of a kind development, you have a lot of risk and somebody has to accept those risks. So I think the biggest challenge that is facing today's SMR technologies and their uh, capability to become implemented into a project is exactly that, is that how are you gonna make it into a project? SMR companies are very, very savvy technologically, but they're not necessarily working on the construction and development side, the project development. So this is the key thing that I think that a lot of these projects, a lot of these countries that are looking for SM, to the SMR model, um, is to understand 
what kind of risks they're willing to accept for a first of a kind technology, or do they want to have an end of kind of, kind of build after the SMR has been built somewhere else? So those are the questions that I see that industry is not trying to figure out with the different SMR potential projects around the world. So do you think that it could be that they are more focused on the technology, the development of the technology and get it up and running first uh, before they start thinking about all the issues that you mentioned? Um, or do you think that, I mean, looking at the SMR on the portion on the part of the SMR vendors, should they be thinking about all these questions, um, you know, as they develop their technology? The, the, the SMR vendors, of course, they are going to be focusing on their technology because that is their product. However, you, they always have to remember that their customers, which is going to be a country or utility, is not buying technology. What they're buying is electricity and energy. In order to get electricity and energy, you need to have a completed project that has been successfully completed and is operating. And that's where project developers and integrators are going to become very, very important. So if I was looking at an SMR company today, I would say, okay, who are you collaborating with in order to put these projects together in a, in a, in a way that makes sense from a risk allocation point of view? Uh, and those are the kind of discussions that, they, that in my view, they should be having at this point. Precisely. So, so, so in essence, um, you know, just like how some SMR developers are looking for uh, component partners, uh, supply chain partners, um, they should also be starting to look at developing relationship partnerships with uh, potential project developers, uh, you know, who, are, who can work hand in hand with them to, to implement uh, those projects in the near future. Correct me if I'm wrong, George. Yes, correct. Wonderful. Um, so I guess, you know, um, while we, we've been talking about SMRs, does this spell the end of large reactors? Do large reactors still have a role to play? And what are the advantages and type of country profile uh, which, are, which should still be looking at uh, large, large reactors, George? And not at all. I mean, to the question of whether this is going to displace large reactors, I do think that large reactors have a market um, and have a very good market. And there's a number of products that are going to go ahead with large reactors over the next few years. Uh, and we're already seeing them going on and some of them that will happen in the near future as well. Um, the thing that you have to remember, of course, about large reactors, the opposite of the SMRs, is that most of the ones that are now in the market have finally been proven. They have built, they have been built, they've been constructed, they're operating. So right now you've taken away the first of a kind risk. Uh, they become much more um, uh, yeah, bankable and, uh, you know, risk, uh, they have lowered down the risk with these uh, operating plans and operating reference plans. So there is a lot of knowledge now about how to build them and operate them. But I, th I think that a lot of countries that are looking to develop nuclear programs will also consider the large reactors. Now, um, I think with the SMR, again, as I said before, you, you get a different dimension and maybe there's reasons for a country, a particular country to be looking at the SMR model uh, because of issues of scale or financing or um, looking into future technologies. But I do think that large reactors that exist today will be continue to be built uh, around the world. And I think that for a number of countries that need a lot of power, baseload power, large reactors make a lot of sense. And to remember, was that one thing that's very, very important that's the negative side of the SMRs is that you lose the economies of scale. You know, with a large reactor, yes, you take a lot of the risk, you take a lot of the time and, and, and construction, but you, know, you put down a reactor that's 1,400, 1,600 megawatts, all in one. So you look at the UAE, for instance, just we had four large reactors, uh, the APR 1400s at a total of 5,600 megawatts that are slowly coming online in the UAE. And that is gonna cover 25% of the electricity consumption of the UAE, which is pretty remarkable for one nuclear power plants, four units. That's fantastic, man. I mean, uh, I, mean I, I guess economies of skills don't lie. Um, but I guess, George, going back to SMRs, what should SMR developers uh, do differently to ensure that they don't make the same mistakes as large reactors? Because, I mean, SMRs has been, pride, has been termed as the game changer in the industry. Yet uh, many have said that you know if they do not learn from the mistakes of uh, how large reactors projects have been developed, they might go down the same path uh, as you have alluded to to some of your points earlier. So exactly, yeah. So what and, should what should be done, George? Yeah, exactly, and that's precisely the, the thing that they should be looking at. You know, looking at the large reactor programs. So what went wrong there? Uh, what what? How, why were there delays in the construction? What happened? The cost overruns. How did the regulatory system impact uh, the, the, the reactor program? 
And mind you here that with the SMRs, you're gonna have probably an evolving regulatory structure, uh, maybe a regulator that has very little capability when it comes to you know, SMRs or knowledge or things like that. So there's a number of risks that you have to keep identifying. So again, the way that I would look at this is do not just focus on the technology, which of course is important to make sure that all works well and it's, it's good and you know, safe and all the, all the great things that the SMR developers have, but to look at the project and just say, okay, how do I make this a successful project? Because again, your end product is electricity and energy, and that's where you want to be focused. So I think a focus on that upfront before you start getting into the details of the project about risk allocation, talking to your host country about what kind of risks uh, the host country is willing to take. How is there going to be, uh, how is the regulator going to um, affect the project? Where's the supply chain going to come? How are you going to deal with first of a kind issues? All these issues, are, I think, are things that the SMR developers should be looking at right now. Wonderful, wonderful. Yes. I mean, uh, thank you so much for your insights, George. You know, I, I think, you know, you've, you've given us some food for thought, not just, um, you know, for, for governments looking at uh, SMRs and large reactors, but also for SMR developers and how they should be uh, looking and, and learning perhaps from uh, their, their big projects, the large reactors. Uh, so, George, once again, thank you for joining us today on NDP Hot Seat. Always great to have you on. Um, any final words from your end, George? Always great to see you, Zaf. Thank you very much. Always, always enjoyable. Really good discussion. Great, great questions. And I think that the right kind of questions that uh, uh, the countries around the world and developers around the world should be asking. Wonderful, wonderful. All right, George, take care. Stay safe. This is Zaf Quelo signing out. Hope to see you again. Take care. Bye-bye.